Graduated cylinders have kind of a funny name. Reminds you of somebody that just graduated from high school or college. But that's okay because it makes it easier to remember them that way. Now graduated cylinder is an instrument that's used for a specific purpose. Just like a thermometer is used for a specific purpose. A thermometer measures the amount of heat energy in the air or temperature. A graduated cylinder measures volume and volume simply the amount of space something takes up. Now whether you realize it or not you already have an idea of how much certain volumes are. For instance if you think of a two liter bottle of coke that's two liters or a regular bottle of drinking water that's a half a liter or about 500 milliliters. It's really important that whenever you read a graduated cylinder, you always read it at eye level. Because if you try to read it above eye level, it's going to make the, unit, the measure look low. If you read it below eye level, it makes it look high. Whenever you're measuring an irregularly shaped object, what you want to do is you want to put water in the graduated cylinder first and then you want to get that volume of the water by itself. Let's say for instance this was 30 milliliters of water before we got started and then we drop the water, the rock in the water carefully and the water level rises to 35 milliliters of water. Now we're not going to say that the rock is 35 milliliters by volume because remember the, the water by itself was 30 milliliters so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to subtract the after after minus the before or 35 milliliters minus 30 milliliters that means the rock is only 5 milliliters one other thing whenever you're reading the graduated cylinder the sides of the graduated cylinder tend to attract the water. So you're left with this sort of concave water. Whenever you look at it, what you need to do, we call this a meniscus. You need to read it at eye level, but you also need to read it from the lowest or the center point of the meniscus. All right, this graduated cylinder doesn't have the meniscus like we talked about. Uh, this is just straight across. So it makes it easier to read, but in a real graduated cylinder, you are going to see that concave uh, water uh, because the sides of the graduated cylinder are going to attract the water, and that's going to leave like a little uh, a lower level uh, of water here. Uh, Let's take a look at this. Is if we we're going to say the lower number is just the volume of the water by itself, and then we're going to pretend we dropped an irregularly shaped object or maybe a rock inside the graduated cylinder, and we're going to get this higher number. In this case, first of all, let's start off with an easy way to tell how much each of these lines are worth in between, for instance, the 100 and the 200. Okay, first of all, we're going to count by hundreds. 100, 200, 300, right? Okay, let's get the two lowest numbers. 200 minus 100 is 100. Okay, so we're going to have 100. And let's count how many lines there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 100 divided by 10 is 10. That means each little line is worth 10 milliliters. Okay, so we have 310 milliliters minus 180 milliliters. 310 minus 180 milliliters that's going to give you 130 milliliters that our irregularly shaped object or a rock would be. Okay, 
let's get let's go back to an easier easier one though. Okay. Okay. Now, in order to find out how much each one of these is worth, let's get our two lower numbers. Twenty minus ten is ten, right? Okay. Let's count the numbers in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten divided by ten is one. That means each line is worth one. Okay. So now we have this is 31 milliliters minus this is 18 milliliters. 31 minus 18 is 13 milliliters. So we started off with water by itself is 18 milliliters. Our water and our rock is 31 milliliters. 31 minus 18 is 13 milliliters for our rock or our irregularly shaped object. Okay, here's another one. Ooh. We start off with one milliliter of water. We add our irregularly shaped object. Hard to believe this could really happen. And we have 44 milliliters for a combined total. So 44 milliliters minus one would mean our irregularly shaped object or a rock would be 43 milliliters. Okay. What I'd like for you to do is number one through five for your homework. And I'd like for you to do five of them by yourself. And then after that, I'm gonna give you a bonus question. I'm gonna see if you can get a harder one. Here's the first one, number one. And what I'd like for you to do is I'd like for you to record the uh, both levels. You need to record the higher level and the lower level and uh, go ahead and subtract. So you start off with this level of water. You end up with this level for the water and the irregularly shaped object. And this by itself the part in between, the difference, in other words, is the volume of our irregularly shaped object. That's number one. Here's number two. Number two. Get the volume of the water by itself the volume of the water in the irregularly shaped object combined and the difference will tell you the volume of our irregularly shaped object. This is number two. And here's number three. Number three. Volume of the water alone, volume of the water in the irregularly shaped object, and the difference is the volume of our irregularly shaped object. Number three. Here comes number four. Number four. Hopefully you're doing pretty well with this. If you have any questions while you're trying to figure this out, write it down because you can ask me in the morning. If you have any comments, write them down. Here's number five. I need the volume of our irregularly shaped object. This is number five. Okay, and I told you I was going to give you a bonus question. Okay, for those of you out there that like a challenge, 
Let's get you a good bonus question. Let's try this one. See if you can figure this out. Uh, actually, we can't tell the difference between the... There we go. Try this one. Now we can tell the before and the after. Okay. Hopefully you got it. When you're looking at a graduated cylinder, think of it as a ruler. Because, I mean, if you look at it, it looks like a ruler, doesn't it? If you have any questions, any comments, write them in your science journal. Let me know in the morning. Have a good night.